Hi guys, welcome back to Irish Footy Vlogs. Welcome back to another video of mine. This video today is about Waterford FC and as it says in the thumbnail, thumbnail and the, the description and the title, etc. Are Waterford FC on the rise? Now, Waterford FC fans will know that they've seen quite a few false dawns and I'm not going to go back in history, but I am going to touch on bits and pieces since 2016 and to where we are today which is 2024 we're going into that season soon and uh, it's at 23 we're still in that period if you like but um yeah obviously waterford back in uh, 2016 were rebranded essentially they were waterford united uh haven't been previously at waterford fc uh in the past but they rebranded back to waterford fc in 2016 they were taken over by Lee Power from Swindon Town, who uh, owns Swindon Town as well. And the similarities actually between Lee Power taking over then and the Fleetwood Andy Piley connection, if you like, um, last year essentially, there is there is connections there. To be honest with you, in a way, and a lot of Waterford fans might say, you know, a lot of the things that happened at the beginning of Lee Power's tenure was very good, very professional, um, et cetera, et cetera, and they can align that to to now basically and uh, and that's why I kind of I'm asking the question are Waterford on the rise is it another false dawn um, are Waterford FC fans still a little bit burnt by bits and pieces that happened in the recent past as well before they really commit to oh you know we really are on the rise of our period let's say of three or four years um, because for a period of three or four years under Lee Power things were going great weren't they really um, we know Waterford have been yo yo since uh, from the Premier to the First Division since 2016 for various different reasons and mistakes were made etc and that's what I'm kind of getting into as well um, but when Para came in in 2016 things looked good didn't they they um, as I said they rebanded the club went back to Waterford FC I think a lot of Waterford fans may have preferred that I think they went back to old traditions really the crest was uh, you know revamped to you know time long ago let's say you know what I mean they really were kind of making Waterford they were trying to bring that kind of core element of Waterford back to the city and I think Piley has tried and Fleetwood have tried to do that as well the the consortium if you like and the owners of Fleetwood have tried to do that as well and are doing that currently with Waterford as such they haven't changed anything obviously from the rebranding because the brand is there essentially but things were looking good on their lead power to be fair they were in the first division uh, when he took over as well and managed to get back up by winning the league and um, they had a couple of good years Alan Reynolds even was the manager of Waterford bringing back um, bringing in a legend really a Waterford man as manager Pat Fenlon notably was director of football he's there at, uh, at Bohemians now as well but they brought in a lot of players and um, you know put a lot injected a lot into their, their squad or became a professional squad all that kind of stuff a bit like what they're doing now as well um, and eventually, I suppose, they finished fourth in 2018 in the Premier Division. Now, unfortunately, they lost out on European football because of the UEFA rule. And I know Waterford fans, some Waterford fans are a bit unhappy at St. Patrick's Athletic over that. But in fairness, that was the actual rule. Um, you know, it, it, it's disappointing and unlucky. There's no doubt about that. I mean, it's harsh in many ways. But the fact that the club were rebranded. You had to be rebranded for three years before you could play European football. This was two years and all that kind of stuff. It's a bit, in my opinion, it's a bit stupid to be honest with you. But they were the rules, and um, so they were unlucky. And a lot of people would say, and Waterford fans would tell you that the Lee Power era started to go downhill a bit after that. Um, maybe they had to players had to leave the club because of that, etc., etc. Players just maybe left the club because they weren't playing European football, but. Fought in the league, playing some wonderful football at that point as well, and um, players like Bastian Heary and their pomp, etc. Play, players like that, um, doing really, really well for 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 Waterford, um, and things kind of went south after that. Lee Power seemed to lose interest. Just got distracted by something outside. Lee Power, Power seemed to lose interest in the project, and you could kind of tell he was wandering away from it, and he was losing interest for speculation for a long time. Now he had more uncertainty at the club and all these things like and uh, you know eventually he sold the club to to Richard Forrest. Now Richard Forrest came in banging his drums literally. I think uh, one of the very first games he was in with the fans playing banging the drums and I thought it was a bit. I remember at the time thinking, is that a bit much? Uh, proven to be the case to be honest with you. Uh, you 
know, he, I'm one of the lads, you know. I don't think owners should go get that close to a fan base anyway because things can go wrong and stuff. And, you know, Forrest, I don't know. He wasn't really into it. I, I, I'm not really sure. I, I don't think, for all for fans, don't like his tenure there either. And there's a big controversy a couple of days before the UCD match in the, the relegation promotion playoff <laughs> whereby he sacks Mark Bertram, doesn't he? He sacks Mark Bertram and... You know, I was at that game at Richmond Park actually, and um, there was a whole disgruntlement around the the fan base, and I don't know. You could just tell in the pitch. Who knows? Maybe if Mark Bertram was there, UCD would have won it anyway. And there was all kinds of conflicts and controversies going on, and blaming, you know, it was Mark's fault, it was Richard Ford's fault, all this kind of stuff. And um, it's hard to get into that really too much, but you know, I remember they were they were very poor out there. They were all over the place. And that's a good preparation ahead of a relegation promotion playoff. And after that, basically, they lost. It went down. Uh, long story short, Forrest sells the club again. Uh, this time to a Fleetwood. We're getting on to it now. A Fleetwood consortium um, and Andy Piley. And uh, without going too much into details, obviously, Andy Piley, more controversy came in with fraud and bits and pieces like that. Um, and that the fact that he might, there was a chance he's going to jail, and I'm not going into too much detail on that, but obviously he is in jail at the moment, but does, it doesn't seem to have stopped what the the guys from Fleetwood are doing. Obviously Waterford and Fleetwood are connected as a club, and you know it's, a, it's not just Andy Piley, there's a consortium there, and um, nothing has changed since Andy went to jail, that's, so that's a good thing from Waterford's point of view, you know, that kind of way. But... Uh, once again taken over while they're in the first division you know they had Ian Morris was in there for a while and uh, you know more messy kind of stuff I don't think Cyril was the man really to lead water for forward in my opinion I don't think he was tactically there if I'm honest with you um, but that's another story but they went and they eventually they brought in Keith Long who vastly experienced uh, League of Ireland campaign or League of Ireland manager knows the league inside out as in players etc etc uh, did a great job at Bohemians was probably unlucky enough to get a trophy before he left but he was there for about eight seasons at Bohemians and when he took over Bohemians were in big big trouble big trouble so he knew he knows how to go in and do a job at a club that maybe are struggling and things not doing well behind the scenes and stuff. And obviously there's always been issues like that at Waterford FC as well. And so Keith Long being no stranger to any of that kind of stuff. Um, but going in and managing in the first division, uh, it was a bit of a struggle for most of the season. Actually, Galway just ran away with it. And after that, Waterford, they were second, but... You always feared, would they get through the playoffs? Because a lot of the time, the team that finishes second doesn't get through the playoffs. And they managed to get there in the end, basically. Um, you know, they beat Cove and they beat Cork City to, to get through. And um, I thought the squad Keith had was probably weaker than the squad Waterford had in the previous season, to be honest with you. But Keith knows how to get the best out of players. And it wasn't all plain sailing, as I said. But the fact is, he got the job done. They got promoted. Now we're going into the Premier Division. And Waterford are back where they want to be. And there's a bit of an element to that early lead power phase. Now, I think, as I say, the connections align a little bit. There's a professional aspect of the club. People down at Waterford will tell you what's going on behind the scenes in terms of professional aspect. Um, very in line with Fleetwood. They're actually, as I'm doing this video, they're on their way to Fleetwood as well for a pre-season tournament, which is um, exciting, to be fair. Um. And obviously there's a connection with players as well. Some players have left. Some Waterford fans wouldn't be happy with that. Some players have actually left for Watford to go to Fleetwood. Phoenix Patterson, for example, Junior. And recently Roland Coughlin. But they've also benefited from them. That's going to happen, though, when you have these kind of Fleetwood, Waterford, or whatever it is, links. That's going to happen. You'll see it the same with Drotta and uh, Walsall as well. That's going to happen. But at the same time, there's a professional element, as I said, in at the club at the moment. Keith Long... I knew at the start of pre-season when Keith Long was going in that he'd be looking to bring in players with Premier Division experience. That doesn't mean old players or older players. It means players with Premier Division experience. In comes Dara Leahy, bags of experience. He's only 25, 26, Dara Leahy, but bags of experience. He can play left-back, can also play centre-back. Leahy was at Bowes with Keith Long and actually plays blessed football under Keith Long, notably as well, the Waterford fans. Um, so that's a big one as well. So you're looking at that and you know i kind of gone yeah he ha he's having a stamp and things now in comes ben mccormick now ben mccormick 
you know, is 20 years old. For me, he's a lot to prove. The raw talent is there, but he has an awful lot to prove. Um, but again, he's got Premier Division experience, you know. Um, so they brought in these type of players with that Premier Division experience, and they'll get players that kind of come in from the Fleetwood scenario as well. They still have, have more work to do, I think. And another key aspect is they're paying fees for players. So they're actually paying fees for players. They paid fees for two of the players. Uh, Robbie McCord has obviously come back to the club as well. And he, Keith Longplay had him under him at one point, Bowles as well. So you can see where I'm going and see where Keith Long's going with that kind of experience. I think that's vital to mix with the young English players that generally are going to come in for Fleetwood and that. And I think he's the base of a decent side. Anyway, I like McDonald in midfield. I like Connor Parsons. Um, they be tr they're trying to get Bagley back. If they can get him back, it'd be massive for them, I think, as well. So I think they've got a good mix of kind of getting in players' experience in the Premier Division and you know getting some good young players with good contacts from England. And as I say, paying fees for players, professional aspect on and off the pitch. Now they want to keep that going, Waterford, and hopefully that's going to be the case in three or four years, and we're not talking about another disaster and they're back to where they were. And this is the point: are Waterford on the rise? You know they're in the Premier Division now with teams that it's a strong Premier Division this season, but they have the experienced manager in there in Keith Long. Um, they're, they're going for players. They're made a, a substantial bid for Tommy Lonergan. And even if they don't get him, the fact that they're even making big bids for these type of players um, is telling you a lot. There's other clubs, you know, struggling to get these players across the line that are in the Premier Division for years. So that's another thing as well. So on the face of it, guys, Waterford FC do look like they're on the rise. But there's that little caveat there that Waterford fans will know all too well because of the past. And especially the recent past. Because there are things that are aligning with what happened with Perra and Swindon in the initial phase anyway. They'll be hoping that that secondary phase doesn't happen under this regime. And uh, this is a question I put to the Waterford fans. What do you think overall on all the subjects? Anything I said regarding the club in the video. Um, do you think that... This could be another fall stone. Do you think that it's not a fall stone and that Waterford are on the rise at last? Because the potential is there. It's a great city. It's a great club. And the potential is there. And I think most people want to see a Waterford team at least in the Premier Division consistently, to be fair, at a club. So I think, personally, I think they are going the right direction. And the fact that the, the, the fraud and the jail sentence and all that hasn't affected them, that's a good thing. Fleetwood, you can look at Fleetwood as well and look at what they've done as well. And it's been generally very impressive. So I think it's here to stay. I think Waterford will want to make sure they're staying in the Premier Division this season. I do think they have a chance. It's very strong and it's hard to pick a team who's actually going to finish 10th. That's the only issue. But I certainly think they have a good fighting chance and they'll give themselves a good fighting chance, particularly with Keith Long there. So guys, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, hit your bell notification button. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And we'll talk to you soon.